in between um, and even before that, I had met her family and her mother's second husband, who is a retired um, actuary, actuarial whatever, and a Republican who golfs at the country club and who every time we see him uh, lifts a glass of wine, always um, uh, usually um, a Pinot or a Cabernet, and says, I want to drink to your beautiful relationship. And her mother, um, also a very conservative though a proud Democrat, um, calls her up and says, you have the best marriage of any of my children. <laughs> so um, I th it's very, this whole question of personal contact, of one-on-one um, -on -one communication has been very much in the forefront of my mind, especially after I had to give a toast of their 25th anniversary to a giant roomful of 200 um, deeply, deeply uh, practicing Christians and Republicans um, and talk about my relationship um, to her. Um, yeah, well, that's what um, her, her right-wing conservative brother, who's instrumental in the Episcopal split, um, came up and gave me a hug and said, you're pretty brave. Um, but this is not so much about that. I want to talk about strategy. Um, and uh, I was really pleased um, that Rob showed that clip. Um, and I'd like to kind of um, juxtapose it in your minds uh, with the clips from Gus Van Zandt's Milk. Um, two clips, one in which Harvey goes to meet with the sort of A-list gays, the advocate publisher controlling the official gay image and walks out. And the second one, um, when uh, those same powers come to him for the meeting about the Briggs Initiative with their plan for how to do it and are essentially thrown out. Um, because Harvey says the only way to do it is to not have this campaign filled with celebrities, filled with these images of people who they don't know, but that you have to go out, you have to go out and meet them, you have to go out to their own turf and argue with them and that, and that scene in the film where he goes to Orange County um, into the heart of the belly of the beast um, to argue the case. And I, with, with all due respect to Matt, who knows much more about organizing and laws than I do, um, I would say that the um, uh, No on Eight campaign, from my point of view, was the exact opposite of the campaign that got Obama elected. And this was the irony that people were so busy going down to phone banks to call folks in Ohio to vote for Obama that they didn't call the, everyone in California about Prop 8, that people were so busy going trying to make sure that Obama was elected that they forgot to start doing newspaper interviews with each other, writing op-eds as a person, not as a person in an agency, not as a person part of a campaign, but as ordinary people. Um, I mean, imagine if, if, we, if somebody had figured out some way to game Google, so that photographs of people with their own personal stories were popping up all over the place whenever you, kicked, you know, clicked on other kinds of propaganda. The best ad that I saw um, for the No on 8 campaign was unfortunately in the back of one of those little giveaway neighborhood newspapers, the Noe Valley Voice in San Francisco, which was, and maybe tell me if you saw it somewhere else, because I didn't. It was a photograph of a Chinese American man, his daughter, and his daughter's wife. And he talked about how his daughter and her wife had met at the, um, at the um, moon festival, at the new moon festival, uh, the lunar festival for Chinese New Year, and how it was hard for him, but she, this was her story, and how happy she's made his daughter, and he can really tell you that this is really important, and to see them get married is just like the happiest day of his life. Very, very powerful. Now, where, did, where else did that appear? Those, those weren't no one eight. Those weren't yeah. no one eight, and those were part of the Let California Ring campaign, yeah. which was a C3. Yeah, thank that you. Was focused on communities of color, so there were some that ran in African American yep. papers, um, um, Spanish language newspapers. Yep. I would say, I would venture that if those ads had been much more widely seen, and if they had spanned all kinds of voters, that even though I completely agree with what Matt has said in terms of, of people's deep, deep discomfort and the other kinds of battles that have to be waged, I think we might even have seen um, a different outcome if that had been combined with the kind of grassroots organizing that Harvey Milk was all about. I mean, when, when you said um, that he, he could be the front man, but then there was this huge grassroots campaign behind him, um, from my point of view, um, that's, that's what was missing. And then the, the extreme irony is that the, the right um, had such good ads, and you would have thought that if we could do anything, we could have fabulous, fabulous ads. And, and yet, we got out-added <laughs> and out-canvassed, and very much out-canvassed. And I don't know if any of you in this audience are old enough to remember a British Channel 4 show called um, Out on Tuesdays. Did anyone ever see it? 
Thank you. One of the shows they did was a show in which they went to the Sachi and Sachi ad campaign and asked them to create an ad campaign for becoming homosexual. This was in the early 80s and um, and they did, they showed the campaign, they put together a huge campaign. Um, and so that kind of idea of what basic advertising can do and what basic canvassing and grassroots organizing can do and how they can work successfully together. And um, then finally, I don't know if anyone saw the local paper here yesterday, but the headline was that Utah, you people in Utah support gay rights. Did you, anyone see that? That they do not support GLBT marriage, but that they support by a, a large majority, everybody in the state, including Mormons, uh, supported LGBT rights. So that's something we can come back to. So I don't know if any of you want to respond to what I was just saying, but I'd, I would like to discuss questions of strategy, people, you know, perceptions of the panelists. We'll get to the audience after. We have about maybe 10 or 15 more minutes before we get to the audience. So be with me. Well, um, perhaps extremely foolishly, I'll jump into this a little bit. And I think, I think that the history of Prop 6 has been a little bit rewritten recently, um, and, 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 and the history of Prop 8 as well. In this, uh, look, when, when, when Prop 6 started, we were behind better than two to one in the polls. We were really in desperate shape. And it's true, there were, there were, really, there were actually three separate statewide campaign organizations um, going at it in different ways. The Goodstein and his folks who walked out of that room went and did their campaign anyway. There was another high-end campaign called No on Six, and then there was a grassroots organizing campaign. But many of us felt that the thing that turned us late in the polls um, was when we got endorsements from Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. Um, and they endorsed it because Prop 6, as written, was going to apply to straight teachers and school workers. So it, 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 the, the layering of how we won Prop 6, it's a little more complicated than just that we got in, out into the streets and talked to people. Um, the ad you were talking about from Let California Ring, um, the, a few million dollars worth of those ads did run. I think the reason you didn't see them is they were running in, in both on radio and in papers in media that was focused on the people that they were trying to convince. Okay. And I don't think that was a bad call. I really, okay. I mean, it would have been better. Surely it would have. Well, look, I, um, and there was a, a there was a field campaign, and it contract it contacted a few hundred thousand undecided voters, and that's not bad. Now, look, do I think there should have been a street campaign of people having one-to-one -one conversations? I wouldn't be putting the website up here if I didn't believe that, and didn't believe that's the way we ought to go. And I think the yes people did that to a certain extent, but it, it's a complicated picture. Mm -hmm. Sure thing. Anyone else? I also think it's important to note that the yes people were putting this campaign together for the past 14 years compared to the four months that, you know, the No on 8 campaign had after um, Prop 8 got on the ballot. So, you know, from my knowledge, this is the greatest grassroots LGBT campaign that was ever run, and it's just getting going. I mean, there's a group called Vote for Equality that's being run out of the center in L.A. that's doing canvassing this weekend, literally door-to-door -door in Pasadena. So from my perspective, mm -hmm. it's just getting going. It's gearing up for 2010, mm -hmm. and, you know, Prop 8 was just the beginning. Mm -hmm. Can I? Also, I'm, okay, go ahead, Rob. I was just going to say that there's also uh, a big asterisk to, to this camp, this election, as opposed to the sixth election, as I recall, in that in this election, Obama trumped all. I think for for many of us, and in the sixth election, six trumped all. There really wasn't anything mm -hmm. else, yeah. uh, anything else big on that ballot. That's right. A very good. But time. it is also true, worth mentioning, that the Obama with the Obama campaign took American political campaigning into a whole new era, and I don't think, except toward the very end, that the No on 8 campaign began to, began to plumb some of those same roots. Mm -hmm. They did with some really talented people, but very late. Mm -hmm. Wasn't there that sad moment in the debates when when the, you know, Biden, he actually had to say, yes, we are not for, and you, you kind of have to just go into denial, like, I'm going to go into denial for a second, all right, I'm back out, Obama, yes again, you know, you just had to do that, and you know what they have to do, but isn't what really has happened in is we've gone from a religious belief blah 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 thing to now civil rights thing that's i think getting all these politicians to realize that if they don't start supporting this now they're going to fuck themselves five years from now when they're running for governor or something like that when you just drag all that stuff up i think that's right where we are to me it's like that's where we have to push mm -hmm. i don't even know what i'm talking about so. <laughs>